Danahar has banned the move in his gym for good reason, yet you still see his athletes use them in competition because competition and training are two very different things. What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about the most hated techniques in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. 10 techniques hated for a variety of different reasons. Some run the risk of injury, some make Jiu Jitsu a little boring, and some work a little too good. This list is in no particular order, and with that said, let's get started. The scissor takedown. The scissor takedown is hated for good reason. It's super dangerous. If poorly executed or poorly timed, an injury is bound to happen. Not just any injury, but complete devastation of your knee. You're lucky if you break your ankle, which is a weird thing to say, but ankles can normally take more punishment than knees. Either way, you're screwed though, and will not be happy if someone performs one on you. There's two main reasons why people screw these up and injure others. One is that they don't post their hands on the mat first. Posting your hand on the mat will carry your weight and give you more ability to be controlled with your entry. However, there's still risk even if you do post your hand. Another reason is people try to answer when their opponent's leg is behind them. If their opponent's leg is behind them, there is zero chance for them to get their body behind their opponent's leg as they enter, resulting in catastrophic damage. If the opponent's leg is in front, it should be smooth sailing and a fantastic entry. However, scissor takedowns should never be risked unless you're a black belt competitor. Even then, caution and understanding is important. Danahar has banned the move in his gym for good reason, yet you still see his athletes use them in competition because competition and training are two very different things. I strongly encourage holding off on this technique, even if it's allowed in your rule set, but luckily most tournaments ban it. Lapel based guards. Worm guard, lapel guard, lasso guard. What do all these guards have in common? They really tie your opponent up and limit their mobility. Sounds like qualities of a good guard, right? Well, yeah, which is why they're such effective guards. The problem is they can be a little too effective within their control and really stall and slow the match down. I've been in this situation before when I faced a really good lasso player. He was so content with holding his lasso and not transitioning to anything else other than trying to find a moment for a quick triangle or omoplata. The match went the distance 0 0 because I couldn't pass and he won the referee decision. I could be mad at the guards themselves and his style, but in reality, I just need to get better at passing the lasso guard, which I have since, which is why tournaments can be so great for progression. They can really expose holes in your game, which you can learn from. For me personally, I like to have some of these guards in my toolkit, especially the lasso, but I don't base my entire game around them. I think that's where the hate comes from, is people basing their entire games around them and creating a slow-paced, non-viewer friendly match as a result. But with that said, they do work great, and if you hate them, there's always no gi. Jumping close guard. Jumping close guard is another sure way to wreck someone's knee. This is because weight collapsing onto your knee is bad, especially the weight of a full grown person. If you want to get to your close guard, pull guard first and then pull them into your close guard. Don't risk permanently injuring and altering someone else's physical capabilities just because you can't wrestle. Jumping close guard is banned in most tournaments for white belts, but in my opinion, it should be banned for even more. There's tremendous risk and little reward, especially when that reward can be accomplished in much safer ways. I covered this as well as over 20 more techniques that have potential for for injury in the mass safety portion of my performance longevity course check it out link is in the description the double guard pull nothing says combat sport like two athletes sitting to their butt and playing footsies right well if that's your thing welcome to jujitsu especially the lower weight gi divisions you know why learn to wrestle and hit jaw dropping judo takedowns when you can simply sit to your butt although it's not visually appealing i get it i pull guard too at times it can definitely be strategic to pull guard mainly if you're low on energy you have a better guard than your opponent it'll be too much work or unlikely to take your opponent down your gym doesn't focus on takedowns you're worried about getting injured or you want to you can do what you want even hodger gracie pull guard but the criticism and frustration comes with two high level competitors that should have some level of ability to get the match to the ground and they both pull guard luckily the rules changed in 2014 to address this problem now whoever comes up on top first gets two points and if neither does within 20 seconds then both competitors receive a penalty so maybe i'm eight years late complaining about this and the rule change definitely helped the problem but still you're not going to see anyone cheering for double guard pull anytime soon Elbows in the knee to pass closed guard. Elbows in the knees to open closed guard has got to be one of the most hated moves that beginners use. It's hated for two main reasons. One, it doesn't work great, and two, it's painful. Personally, I don't think it's that bad. I don't use it, but I also understand that you can just open your closed guard if the pain is bothersome enough. Slams. Slams are super dangerous, probably even more dangerous than being punched in the head. With a slam, you're being accelerated in the air, downwards onto the mat, risking hitting your head and getting knocked out, or busting some ribs or your spine or more. It's illegal in most tournaments for good reason. Obviously, slamming is a prick move, but if you get slammed, you're often to blame as well. You must protect yourself at all times. You can't rely on the rules, the ref, or your opponent to take care of you. If you're getting lifted into the air and there's a chance of being slammed, let go. I mean, try not to let 
helped them lift you in the first place. Hooking people's legs and breaking their posture can certainly help, but if you're in the air wondering if you can trust your opponent to obey the rules or not, just assume that they won't. There are countless examples of people not adhering to the rules. I mean, they're playing in the B-roll right now. You don't want this to happen to you. Don't slam people and don't let yourself be slammed. Just a reminder to check out my podcast, Talk Jitsu, either on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, or anywhere you can listen to podcasts. We always have informative and fun conversations about jiu-jitsu, so don't miss out. The Baron Bolo. When I first started jiu-jitsu in 2012, the Baron Bolo was all the rage. As popular as people doing it was, was the popularity of people criticizing it. Why were they criticizing it? Well, for one, many just hate anything that resembles sport jiu-jitsu, meaning techniques that will not work or are ill-advised to use in a street fight or MMA fight. The Baron Bolo is definitely that, but at the same time, not everyone does jiu-jitsu for self-defense. In fact, I think the majority of people do it just for fun and for the sport, myself included. De-escalation, meaning using your words as well as the hundred meter dash are way more effective for self-defense than jiu-jitsu. Don't get me wrong, you'd much rather have jiu-jitsu than not for a self-defense situation, but it's not a cover all basis, it should not be relied upon. But that's a topic for a different video. Anyways, the reason why people hated the Baron Bolo back in the day is simply because it was a fad, a fad that worked really well, and many competitors based nearly their entire game around it. You'd often see two competitors both pull card and instantly start working the Baron Bolo on each other, so spectator friendly. The Baron Bolo went from a massively popular fad to just another tool in the toolkit. I used Baron Bolos from time to time, but I don't spam them and build my entire game around them. They're definitely a great tool and technique, and in my opinion, they didn't deserve the hate that they got. 50-50. 50-50 was also all the rage when I started 2012, although kind of on the tail end of popularity of it. Now, like many of the fads previously mentioned, it's just another tool in the toolkit for most practitioners. 50-50 is hated because it's boring. That is, when heel hooks are not allowed at least. When you add heel hooks to the mix, it becomes a much more effective and exciting position, but without them, you're pretty limited in your attacks and are stuck in a pretty weird position. It's hard to get out of 50-50 against someone that really wants to be in 50-50, and people simply hate techniques that slow down matches so much. Much. I don't disagree either. I love fast paced matches and 50 50 kills the movement. Over stacking. Stacking is great and effective, especially when dealing with things like triangles. What I hate though is people go past the point of an effective stack and start putting immense pressure on my neck. The stack was already getting the job done and now my already fragile neck is getting torqued on. Fun, right? Please be aware of over stacking and try to avoid it. Neck pain can be life altering and career ending. You need to take care of your own neck and your training partner's necks. Someone commented on one of my videos that said it looked like I need a neck adjustment. I think I do need one. I don't know if you can tell by looking, but my head kind of sits on my neck kind of weird. Let me know if you can tell. Buggy choke. One of the most hated trends or fads of the 2020s is the buggy choke. Just like the Baron Bolo 50 50 and even leg locks before it, it made a huge impact on the scene and received equal amounts of hate. Let me just start with saying that I can't do a buggy choke. My limb length and thickness will just not allow it. But I happened sub by one once. My good friend Joey got me, and afterwards I had so much better awareness to look out for and deal with it. I haven't been sub with it since. I think most people will be in the same boat. High level grapplers, especially, once you've been caught in it once or a few times, you quickly learn to see it coming and learn the tools to deal with it, which is primarily framing to keep them away from you. I personally think that the buggy choke is an awesome tool to have if you are put in side control. Obviously, don't get there in the first place, but if you are there, I mean, it's a good attack. It clearly works on even high level competitors. Yeah, some people have hurt themselves going for it, but people do dumb things all the time, even for things like triangles. Don't pull on your own limbs so hard that you hurt yourself. This should be common sense more so than it is a fault of the buggy choke itself. So I don't think that it deserves the hate it gets, but I've also lived through many fads and understand that things that get popular kind of quickly die out and just become tools in the toolkit like I've mentioned throughout this whole video. All right, let me know if you hate any of these techniques. I'd love to hear your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree with me. Thank you to my patrons who support the channel. I super appreciate you guys. I appreciate everyone who watches and thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or fist bump and I'll see you guys next time.